Believe it or not, this is a seven-spotted ladybird in its larval stage. I believe this is a large skipper sitting on the flower of a thistle. This is a robber fly, also known as an assassin fly. There are many different kinds. I believe this one goes by the Latin name of Empis livida. They feed mainly on other insects and catch them in flight, stabbing them with their pointy proboscis, which is quite a good trick if you can do it. I believe this is a marsh snipe fly. Its larvae live on the ground and are predators going after small worms and beetles. I think this is a moth that goes by the name of Crambus palela. It's one of those small moths that you see fluttering about. It lands on something and immediately collapses down to a tube which is almost indistinguishable from a grass stem. The unmistakable Red Admiral. Apparently they are very fond of ripe fruit and they will attempt to overwinter in the UK, but few survive. Every year they are repopulated by butterflies flying up from further south. This is a black and yellow longhorn beetle. They are very fond of umbellifers, such as hogweed and cow parsley, and they lay their eggs in rotten wood. The larvae live in the wood for about two to three years, and emerge as adult beetles which only last about two or three weeks. This is the spotted crane fly. As an adult, it doesn't eat at all, but its young are known as leather jackets and spend their time munching on the roots of plants. This is the orange spot moth, another small insect with a likeness for hogweed. This is an Ichneumon wasp. I think this one goes by the Latin name of Ichneumon suspiciosus. It has a more efficient way of implanting its young into living creatures than the alien from the film of the same name. It simply lays its eggs into caterpillars and then the larvae eat the caterpillar from the inside out, which avoids the need for that tedious face hugger thing. Still, all things bright and beautiful. No insects here. This is crosswort, also known as smooth bed straw. Once recommended as a cure for headaches, hundreds of years ago, but I wouldn't recommend it now. Next, some bracken stems busy uncoiling, which I just took quite a fancy to. This is a hoverfly. There are thousands of different species, but I think this one is called Episurphus baltius. Although it bears a passing resemblance to a wasp, it is entirely harmless to humans and won't sting you. However, the larvae of some species may be used to control aphids as they eat them. This is a nettle weevil an insect which is commonly described as being metallic green, but all the ones I've seen look more blue to me. This is a sawfly. I think this one goes by the name of Tenthredo livida. The adults feed on pollen and nectar, but the larvae eat plants and feed at night. Not entirely sure, but I think this might be the larvae of a red and black frog hopper. You can also see some aphids on the underside of the stem. This is a shiny black flesh fly. They are slightly unusual in that they tend not to lay eggs. Instead, the maggots, which may be in the process of hatching, are deposited directly onto dung or rotting flesh. Yum! Needless to say, they spread quite a lot of disease. 
And lastly, a red soldier beetle, another insect that likes hanging around umbellifers like cow parsley and hogweed, but also daisies. Uh, it loves munching on aphids, so it can be quite useful in the garden. Before I go, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the camera I'm using for these photographs. I have a Fujifilm X-T2, which I absolutely love, and I also have a Samyang 100mm macro lens for the Fuji, which works very well. The only snag is, it doesn't have autofocus, so when you're trying to focus on a little bug, it's really quite difficult because the depth of field, even when set to something like f10, can be smaller than the insect you're trying to photograph. So, Fujifilm do make an 80mm macro lens, which apparently is very good, and it does have autofocus, but it's somewhere north of £700, even secondhand. I kind of balked at that a bit, so I went back and looked at my other cameras. The very first interchangeable lens camera I bought was a Canon EOS 760D, which is still in very good working order. So I searched around for what's available for the Canon EF mount and came across this 100mm macro lens. This set me back a mere £244 and I think it does a very good job. There is a more expensive one, uh, several hundred pounds more expensive, which also has image stabilisation and that's a nice to have but I wasn't prepared to pay for that. So if you're in the market for a macro lens and don't want to break the bank, check out someone like MPB or the used section of Wex or Park and uh, you may find yourself something of a bargain. As I say, the only snag with the Canon lens is that it doesn't have any image stabilisation, but uh, you can get by with that if you make sure you're using a fast enough shutter speed, which may mean cranking up the ISO a bit, then you should be able to get sharp pictures. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, click that little bell, whatever. Thanks. Bye.